We've previously discussed cosets and normal subgroups, and how in a normal subgroup, left and right cosets are the same. Links in the description to those lessons. Today, we'll introduce an operation on cosets called coset multiplication, which makes the connection between normal subgroups and cosets even more clear. And this is one of our last steps towards being able to construct all homomorphic images of a group. So, we're on the precipice of something great. Let's get into it. Let H be a subgroup of a group G. Then coset multiplication is defined as follows. The coset HA times the coset HB, where A and B are elements of the group G, is just equal to the coset HAB, where A and B are, of course, being composed under the operation of the group G. So coset multiplication is defined exactly as you would expect. HA times HB is HAB. However, it's not actually quite this simple. Reason being, cosets have multiple representations. I might have a coset HA, but perhaps it's equal to the coset HC, right? There are multiple ways of representing the same coset. And so it's not at all clear from this definition that coset multiplication is well-defined because this definition is based on how we write the coset. HA times HB is HAB but we could write HA differently, in which case the resulting product might be different, and that's a big problem. So coset multiplication is not well-defined as we've discussed it so far. It's possible that we have two equal cosets, HA and HC, and another two equal cosets, HB and HD, and we could multiply HA and HB and get something different from when we multiply their equal cosets, HC and HD. These could be different. So coset multiplication is not well-defined in general. Let me show you an explicit example of where this problem could pop up. Consider the permutation group S3 and its subgroup called H, containing the identity permutation and the cycle 1-2. You'll see that coset multiplication on this subgroup does not work well. Consider the coset H2. 2, 3. Combining these permutations with 2, 3 on the right, we find that this coset is equal to this, 2, 3 and 1, 2, 3. And you can verify that this is the same as the coset H, 1, 2, 3. These are two different representations of the same exact coset. And we could do that with a different coset of H as well. H, 1, 3, composing 1, 3 on the right for each of these elements, gives us the set containing these two permutations, 1, 3, and 1, 3, 2. And this is the same as the coset H, 1, 3, 2. So we have two different representations of two different cosets. It should be the case that if we multiply H, 2, 3 and H, 1, 3, we get the same as multiplying H123 and H132 because the cosets involved are equal. But as we'll see, that's not how it works out. By definition of coset multiplication, H23 times H13 is H23 times 13, which is equal to H123. However, if we multiply the equal cosets, H123, that's the same as H23, and we multiply that by H132, which is the same as H13, this turns out to equal just H, the original subgroup. Obviously, H is not equal to the coset H123, and so we've shown that coset multiplication like this is not well defined. Again, these two cosets are equal, and these two cosets are equal, so these products should be equal, but we see that they are not, and that's a problem. We are following the convention of composing permutations from right to left, by the way. So to get from here to here, we say 1 is sent to 3, and 3 is sent to 2, 
So in total, one is sent to two, and two gets sent to three. In total, two just gets sent to three, and three gets sent to one. So we see three gets sent to one. That's how that multiplication works. Regardless, we see that coset multiplication doesn't quite work out. However, the problem isn't inherent in coset multiplication. The problem is that it just doesn't work on any old subgroup. You have to choose a special type of subgroup. If H were normal, then coset multiplication would be well-defined. You just need a normal subgroup, and then coset multiplication works out perfectly. The remainder of this lesson will be proving this fact. Here's what we're proving. Let H be a normal subgroup of a group G. Then, if we have two equal cosets, HA and HC, and another two equal cosets, HB and HD, then the products of these cosets, HA times HB, must equal the product of the corresponding cosets, HC and HD. Of course, A, B, C, and D here are all just elements of the group G. And by definition of coset multiplication, when we say HA times HB equals HC times HD, that means that what we're really trying to prove is this, HAB equals HCD, because this is how this is defined. So how are we going to prove this? Well, of course, H is a subgroup of G, so H contains the identity, so obviously the coset HAB contains the element AB. AB is certainly an element of HAB. And we've previously proven that if two cosets have any element in common, they must be equal because cosets partition the group. So they're either disjoint or exactly the same. So if we can just show that AB is also an element of HCD, then we will have established the equality we're looking for. That's the strategy we're going to go for. One more comment before we begin the proof. We define normal subgroups as being subgroups that are closed with respect to conjugates. But then we proved that's equivalent to saying that in the subgroup, left and right cosets are the same. That's the property of normal subgroups that we're going to use in this proof. And again, there are links in the description to my lessons where we went over these things. All right, on to the proof. Since what we're trying to get to is AB is an element of HCD, we'll begin by considering A and B. We know that A is an element of HC, because certainly A is an element of HA, and HA equals HC. So that means that A equals H1C for some H1 in the subgroup H. That's just by definition of a right coset. By similar logic, B is an element of the coset HD, and so B equals H2D for some h 2 in the subgroup H. Then if we multiply A and B together, we get H1C, because that's A, times H2D, because that's B. By associativity, that's the same as H1 times CH2 times D. Now if we could just swap the C and the H2 here, then we would have H1, H2, CD, which is obviously an element of HCD, and then we would be done. But of course, we can't just assume things commute. However, because left and right cosets are the same in a normal subgroup, we can come pretty close to just swapping these elements, and here's how we do it. This CH2 is clearly an element of the left coset CH, by definition. But CH is equal to HC, because left and right cosets are the same in a normal subgroup. And that means that CH2 equals H3C for some H3 in the subgroup H, by definition of a right coset. And that gives us the sort of swap that we want. We have that AB is equal to H1 times CH2D, that's what we had before, but we know that CH2 is equal to H3 times C. So we replace CH2 with H3 times C, and now by associativity, we see that this is equal to H1 times H3 times CD. The key here is that we have an element of the subgroup H multiplied by CD. 
So clearly, this, an element of H times CD, is an element of the right coset HCD. And this is equal to AB. So we've shown that AB is an element of the right coset HCD, as desired. So since HAB and HCD have this element in common, they must be equal cosets. And thus, coset multiplication is defined for normal subgroups. So for normal subgroup H, if you multiply two of its cosets together, HA and HB, you're going to get the same thing as multiplying together any other representations of those same cosets, just as we would desire. So coset multiplication is well defined. So now we've shown coset multiplication is a valid operation on the set of all cosets of a normal subgroup. And you should be excited now because we're headed right towards the definition of something called a quotient group. Link in the description. Hope you'll look forward to it. And if you find these abstract algebra lessons helpful, please consider supporting Wrath of Math on Patreon. Link in the description. It's a huge help. <laughs> Just to be regular